super quick rough draft of a more extended screencast that I'll give to you later on. What I'm going to show you is how to model a real-world object using a pair of reference images. The first thing we're go going to need to do is to add yet another toolbar to our Blender environment here. If you go, if you in the 3D viewport, if you go to the view menu and add properties, which you'll notice N, that's the keyboard shortcut, down at the bottom of the properties toolbar, and you may need to scroll on your screen, you'll see that there is a background images option. I'm going to check it to turn it on. I'm going to expand it so I can see my options. I'm going to add an image here. I'm going to just quickly open up an image that I happened to have put on my desktop a moment ago. Uh, desktop. My front view of the Magellanic Penguin. And I can see nothing right now because of two things. One, I am not in an orthogonal view. So if I change my perspective, and then note that it's five on the numpad, so I'm going to orthogonal view. And I want to look at this, look at my model from the front. Hot diggity, there it is. Now, right now, if I look at this from the side, I still see the same front view of the penguins. That's a little bit of a problem. I'm going to lock this up so that I see my penguin only from the front view. And in fact, because I am nothing if not complete, I'm going to add another image here. It's going to be a side view that I also happen to have of my penguin. And I only want to see the side view from the right side. So if I switch back and forth here, I've got these two. You'll note they're different sizes. We're not going to worry about that too much at this juncture. We'll address it in a second. Having done this, I no longer need to see the properties, so I'm actually going to hide them and on the keyboard. And I am going to model my penguin starting with this cube here. It's a nice simple shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to edit mode. I can just tab in there if I wanted. And I'm going to make sure in edit mode that I have turned on background selection. So if I select a set of vertices, I'll actually be selecting not just the ones I can see in front, but also the ones in back. All right. So to do this, I'm going to be scaling and rotating and translating vertices. And I'm not going to be clicking on the tools down here to do that. I'm actually going to hide those tools. I'm going to be using keyboard commands. I'm going to try and verbalize that when I do it. So I'm typing S to scale the, the, the set out. Now, one thing I notice is that this is not actually lined up with my penguins. I'm going to G to translate this over, scale a little bit more. B, border select the bottom there. I am going to scale that up. Again, not quite lined up. I'm going shift that around, trying to get my penguin lined up here so that I've got, I'm basically tracing out the major contours of his torso here. And it is an imperfect, but you know, truly artistic process, if you will. So there we go. I've got this sort of belt around him right now. I'm going to now select my top uh, vertices. And again, remember, I'm selecting both the front and back, so I selected a whole face. And then I'm going to type E to extrude a new chunk of cube out of here. I've actually added a new section to, to, to my shape. I'm going to pull this up to the next place where the penguin changes width, and I'm going to scale it out a little bit, translate it a little bit, and then I'm going to extrude again, scale it in, so it follows the contours of the penguin. I'm going to extrude it again, scale it in. This I need to translate a little bit because the penguin did not face straight forward. I'm going to extrude it again, scale trace the outline of the penguin here. Now you'll notice that I'm not trying to trace the outline of the penguin everywhere, just from the front view here. I'm going to extend this up one more time, scale it, translate it. There we go. Extrude, scale, I'll translate. I'm going to rescale because I took it way too big. Extrude again here, scale it down. I'm focused on his head right now. I'm not focused on his beaks or beak or wings. So what I'm trying to do here is model the outline of his body here. Having gone up, I'm not going to go down. I'm selecting the bottom of, 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 of my shape, and I'm going to extrude this down and scale it out so that this lines up with his hips. Extrude it down, go scale it centered, scale it in. Time there, scale it in, 
Again, I'm trying to get his body, not his legs, so I'm actually going to pinch it in here so I'm getting the contour of his body down to his tail. Pinch that in. Whoops. I, uh, the wrong key there. It's all good. I keep hitting the wrong key. Yeah, I need that. What I'm trying to do here is move that. Okay, so now I've traced out the shape of my penguin. This is a kind of blocky version of my penguin. I'm now going to look at him from the side. Looking at him from the side, I see that my other background image here is the wrong height. So I am going to show my properties M, and I can actually, with my penguin selected here, I can actually take my side view. I'm going to collapse the front view so it doesn't distract me. And I have some controls here to do things like adjust its size. So I want to get it so that from tail to the top of his head, it's the same size, more or less, as my model so far. I want it to be the same height, so I'm modeling a penguin in the same proportions. And I can also adjust it along the x and y axes here, so I'm actually going to, ooh, I'm actually going to try and get it so it lines up more or less with my existing model. And I need to move up a little bit. And I may need to scale it up just a tinge here. That looks pretty good. Top of the head, bottom of the tail line up. But what I can see already here is that the shape doesn't line up. So I'm actually going to switch to a wireframe view here so I can actually see through my penguin. And I'm going to use my, um, my uh, border select here to just translate this shape over. Now, here's where things get exciting, because I actually am going to try, you see I've got the front of it so it lined up there, I actually would like to um, line up these things, and I'm actually going to do it by constraining my translation here. I'm actually going to type G to translate, and then I want to move it on the Y axis, that's the side to side, if you look down the bottom left corner. Now I'm locked on the Y axis, so I can move, move it in and out. I can do the same thing, by the way, with translate. So I've selected this. I am going, I'm not translate, scale. So I'm going to scale only along the y-axis. And what this does is it lets me pinch in his throat there and move it. Oops. And this is where I have to start being careful because one of the things that's really concerning here is if I squeeze this, um, if I rescale it in multiple dimensions, then it will no longer match up in the front view. Right now, it still matches up in the front view. I'm just trying to get it to match up in the, in the side view as well. So I want to only scale along the y-axis here, so S, Y. And I translate side to side, which is what I can see here. And the goal, let's see how fast I can do this. Ah, see, he caught me there. I actually just uh, scaled that in two dimensions, which is wrong. The goal here is I want to get all of this lined, lined up as well. Now, you know, this, is, this can be a somewhat time-consuming maneuver. I am going to do this roughly, but then I, I want to show you my... my coup de gras here, the, the, the next step that I think is, is really interesting. So we'll assume this is more or less lined up. One of the things we see now is, as just in this rough state, and I can go back and tune it up in a second, is that as I spin around my penguin, I'm starting to get an actual penguin shape here. Now, it's pretty blocky. Let's go to solids just so we can clearly see how blocky this is. You know, this penguin yeah, is not so penguiny. However, with this penguin shape selected, if I go to the modifiers tab, the branch, I can add a subdivision surface. And I'm going to snap to the front view here, and I'm going to amp this up a few times. So I'm subdividing this to be a fairly smooth shape. And now, as I spin around my penguin, I can start to see that this is actually really penguin shaped. And as I work on this here, I'm going to switch back to wireframe so I can see through it a little bit. This actually lets me adjust my my mesh vertices really intelligently because I can now see the exact skin of the penguin and line it up so that 
it's exactly along that outline here. So I can adjust my vertices, and I may need to go back and do a little bit of adjustment here, here as well, right? I can see that there's a whole line of them that I'd like to move a little bit out here. So the penguin profile lines up with his, skin, his, his actual skin there. There's a similar line down this side. And I end up with a shape that matches my penguin quite closely. And that was a desired effect here. I, will, I end up with a shape that I can actually now use that is based on two reference images, but is now usable in three dimensions.